the manor all to ourselves. You know, I envy you, Sherry. You can talk to other people and they won't ignore you. And I envy you. You can ignore any person you're bored with. You don't miss out on much. Most men are dull, unlike yourself. Well, I'm flattered. I had a surprise for my mother. You had a shovel with you, John. I was holding an ancient Greek vase, or rather, quite a big piece of it. I remember now, we dug up the vase from Greek ruins here on Cordona and were eager to show my mother right away. For some reason, the door was closed. We knocked. But nobody Another answered. One. We thought there must be something busy. important. So we left the vase and ran downstairs. I decided to gather some archaeological tools in order to take a closer look at the vase. But then we heard something, didn't we? Yes. It came from upstairs. The vase was broken, shards scattered all over the floor. And your mother was standing at the door. Indeed, John. I doubt it was her. Let me concentrate. Otto Richter was standing there, furious at us. Dr. Richter told us never to disturb my mother when the door is closed. He said she had broken the vase. But we didn't believe him. I bet he smashed it. Her things are still here. Presumably, Mycroft never felt the need to sort through it all. Or couldn't bring himself to. No. He would have put it behind him and moved on. My brother is not one for sentimentality. This room always reeked with an acrid medicinal stench. And here is the reason. This picture was drawn by my mother. I recognize her hand. There's a date on it, 8th of December, 1868.
This seems a bit odd. I can recognize my mother's style, but it's far too sloppy. Dated 12th of February, 1869. It's difficult to tell what this is meant to represent. There's no date at all. Straps on the bed. Just doesn't look right. Seems this was the most frequently used medication. One dram dissolved in a glass of water administered daily. Not to exceed one dose in 24 hours, not to be given to children. Love to take a bath right now. Not this one. Surface corrosion suggests it was prone to extreme temperature fluctuations. Look what I found. The, medical the White boxes, King is under attack. Sherry, can you save him and checkmate the opponent in one move? You're not obliged to be here, Sherry. We can leave any time you want. Oh, nice move. You say. You're not obliged to be here, Sherry. We can leave any time you want. feeling to read about my father's death in the newspaper. I can't recall anything except the deep feeling of loss. You were too young. It happened before we even met. It's so sad. Do you think the doctor could have used these tools here? I hope not. No labels. I doubt it ever had one. There appear to be residues of the bottle's contents at the bottom. Looks like it was damaged by a blunt object. Oh, it brings back some memories. My mother loved flowers. They made her smile. I remember we would bring a new bouquet every week to make her a bit happier. That's why we collected all the violet flowers we could find on the island.
plate shards were all over the floor. Mycroft had to... Mother was troubled that morning. Something we did upset her. Dr. Richter tried to calm her down. We had to put the tray with Mother's morning tea down, but why? It's starting to ring a bell. I think it happened in the morning. It was the morning of the 9th of April, the day my mother died. My mother, she, she was not just ill, but bad. God have mercy. I'm sorry. That explains why you locked the memory away. There must be more. John, I, that was the morning of her death. I need to know what happened. John, every time you... I, I just don't... Please, Sherry, leave it be. Just breathe, John. You know that I cannot leave the last stone unturned. We are so close. I... I know. Can we at least leave it for another day? Well, history tells us these memories are triggered by our investigation of other matters. I suspect it could not be forced even if I so desired. Thank you. How are you feeling about... ...unreeling? In the end, little has changed. My mother was still unwell, just not with tuberculosis. What I do not yet understand is why Mycroft lied about it. There are precious few pieces of this puzzle remaining, John. Let us dawdle here no longer. Indeed. Wait. Did you hear that? Yes. Metallic souls. What is this sailor doing here? Chuck? Holmes, isn't it? I was looking for you.
You can call me your new game. The rules are simple. I have something for you, but you alone must work out what that is. And that something is my prize, I suppose? You're a fast learner, sir. I cannot believe that Mr. Vogel has somehow successfully called my attention to his gallery. You're here with an invitation to visit it, obviously. My word, you are fast, Mr. Holmes. Could you explain how you came to that conclusion? Of course. Explanations are my favourite part of any conversation. Hands without any sign of regular physical activity in contradiction to one who would most usually wear such a uniform. The paint in your hair is pink. I don't know of any military service that paints their ships pink, Unless they have launched a new fashionable fleet. A sailor with the soul of an artist? I would suggest, rather, a gallery employee disguised as a sailor to mislead me. How many artists on the island know where I live and of my passion for deduction? Werner Vogel is clearly at the top of the list. And you've been attempting to conceal something square-shaped within your pocket. An invitation, I suppose. An invitation to Mr. Vogel's gallery. That was remarkable, Mr. Holmes. Mr. Vogel was right about your genius. I think he may have even underestimated you. This is your invitation. Please tell Mr. Vogel that the seed has been planted. He asked me to tell you to do so, if you win this little game. Farewell. You won't believe it, but Werner's other idea was to put... Imagine Goliath was surprised to find Mr. Sherlock Holmes, I presume. Correct. With whom do I am here on behalf of Mycroft, your brother. He is on his way to Cordona. In the meantime, he requests your assistance with a sensitive matter. My orders are to provide you with the details. You have my Suffice to say, the compromising material is of a delicate nature. The matter is of no small importance to the Crown, especially given the status quo on Cordona. What about the status quo? The Ottoman population holds a certain animosity towards the colonial rule. It's been this way since we took over the island. General Ridley made concessions with their leaders, but I'm afraid we are still teetering on the edge of open hostility. What does Mycroft want me to do? Retrieve the blackmail material? No, sir. Nothing of the sort. Mark Ridley is meeting the blackmailer atop the old city bridge tower. You shall observe from a distance, then establish the blackmailer's identity. Do not attempt to arrest him. We'll handle it from there. Saving the best for yourself? Fine. There is a cafe just over the bridge that provides a good vantage point. Please report to me when you are done. I'll be waiting for you here and remember. Discretion is of the essence.
Mr. Holmes, you came. Oh, how kind. Though now, of course, I realize it is because of my game, not the works on display. It needn't be one or the other. Your man's disguise was easily debunked, Mr. Vogel, but I shall admit that you planted in me the seed of curiosity. Ah, terrific! I had no doubt you'd put the pieces together. Let us call it an opening gambit before the real game begins. So, this little game of yours, what's it about? An enigma to solve. A locked area in the basement with no windows found brutally vandalized. I have no clue how it was possible. What about this intrusion? What happened? Last night, I was about to leave the gallery when I heard a noise downstairs. I went to the basement, but I didn't see anything out of the ordinary. It was admittedly a rudimentary inspection. It is not uncommon to get rats down there, so seeing nothing of note, I left and locked up the building. When I returned this morning, alas, I discovered that part of the exhibition had been torched, and there was no sign of the intruder. The mystery being, of course, that all the doors to the gallery were locked exactly as I left them. And the door to the basement is the only entrance? Correct. Tell me you're not intrigued. And this locked area downstairs, what exactly was it? The under gallery. It's always shut, and I'm the only one with the key. Ah, so this is your private collection, not part of the gallery. Oh, no! It's an exclusive exhibition of eccentric pieces. Only a select cadre of artists, investors and collectors are admitted. Not everyone deserves to have their eyes opened. Well, this matter is certainly within my wheelhouse. This intrusion troubles me. Please take a look around, if you're willing. The under gallery is through the door at the end. I will see what I see. You sure you don't like art, Sherry? You sure you don't like art, Sherry? Back home, we've got a taxidermist. He's gonna have a heart attack when he sees what I bring him. A simplistic attempt at provocation. Ugh, sheer vandalism. Only an ignorant person could do such a thing. A malpalbot. Cold fingerprints. I think we're looking for a man with a cold moustache.
Saturn devouring his son. Of grim composition. I'm flinching in its ferocity, yet somehow... The parasites of creativity. Or just a reflection of the artist's recreational interests. Sodden and mould-ridden, one presumes deliberately. Sherry, how about some company in that dreary chamber of yours? Leave my loneliness, Umbro. A handprint of the thing from another world. But it looks fresh, and its coal origin ruins the effect of the extra mundane. True artist never shows an unfinished piece. <sighs> Old and hasn't been used for a long time. The left step's length is shorter than the right. It indicates that the walker was lame. Closed with a metal bolt. Footprints. Size, nine and a half. The intruder entered the basement through the coal chute. He used a magnet to open the hatch bolt. He accidentally pushed a shovel to the floor. Vogel heard the noise. At the sound of his approaching footsteps, the intruder hid inside the coffin. When Vogel entered the basement, he failed to notice anything strange, 
and left without properly checking. The intruder waited until Vogel had left the caravanserai before burning the paintings in Wilde's room, but the vandalism was a cover for the theft. The pieces are not what I expected. What do you think my collection is about? Extravagant paintings have been left to rot in a basement. A commentary on decay and the crumbling of society, correct? I don't know. Well, that's absurd. Of course you know. It's your gallery. There is no one answer, no singular truth, but many filtered through the subjective mind. That forgetting, embellishing, lying machine. Besides, what's wrong with a lie if it makes life more interesting? What's wrong with a lie? It corrupt the ability of others to behave freely and rationally. Men never act freely and rationally anyway. It matters not what is or isn't in the end. The only important thing is how you feel. And I simply want to feel and consume as much as I can. Don't you? Feelings are simply one's animal ancestry trying to wrest back control of the brain. I try to avoid the distraction. You try not to feel, even in a place like this? None of it moves you? To be frank, I struggle to maintain even a wit of interest in art. But Mr. Holmes, it is joy incarnate, mankind's greatest achievement. Mankind's highest achievement above all others is objective and rational thought. I see then why you dislike art, for it means whatever you want it to. Or perhaps, Mr. Vogel, I was lying. Uh huh. Mr. Vogel, my investigation has revealed that the intrusion was not merely vandalism. That's very impressive. This thief was familiar with the gallery and he was sporting a limp. Do any of your clients or artists come to mind? My! Your attention to detail is remarkable, Mr. Holmes. The fire was a clever attempt to hide a stolen painting, even if it didn't fool me. I found the remnants of an empty frame in the pile of ashes. The canvas had been removed. Do you know which paintings in the Wild Room may have interested a thief? Were any particularly expensive? Those pieces belong to a well-known artist named Boniface Mercurio. They're controversial, but not of a notably high value. The intruder entered the basement through the coal chute. He used a magnet to open the latch and dislodged the shovel while doing so. That's the noise you heard yesterday. When you went downstairs to investigate, he hid in the coffin. Hmm. It seems I should have checked the space more thoroughly. There's something more, is there not? I can see it in your eyes. Hmm. Indeed. There is another intriguing angle. I recently received an anonymous offer for one of Mercurio's works. The sum was more than fair, and indeed could have saved Mercurio from his artistic poverty. But he declined it. Was it a performative whim? Some artists lionize pain and hardship as if their work would be worse after a meal and a hot bath. I cannot tell. 
But not only did he refuse the deal, he insisted on displaying the painting in the public space. I was hoping to change his mind, but artists are a special breed of stubborn. So where can I find Boniface Mercurio? I know he lives somewhere in Old City, but couldn't be more specific. He's a prominent figure, so finding him shouldn't be a problem. What was depicted in the piece? Hmm, a bound woman, wrapped in robes, being penetrated by a red devil that stared at us, the viewer. The beast had numerous tails growing from his back, and a large crowd gathered around the pair, silently watching the orgiastic scene. Okay, well, given the nature of the other works on display, it's hard to see why that one stood out. What could possibly be its value? The evaluation of art is very subjective, Mr. Holmes. After all, art is everything. A poem, a bruise, the beads of sweat on your beloved skin. Even a masterfully solved crime. I'm not sure I see the connection. Regardless, the painting was one of a series called The Sabbath Night in Cordona. The works depict sex, violence, and other controversial acts that life, for better or worse, contains. Ah, I see. I'm not sure that you do, but that can wait for another time. Well, I believe I have enough to begin. Thank you, Mr. Vogel. Your gallery certainly has unexpected depths. I'm delighted to have been able to please a friend. In return, I expect you to come back with good news. Or at least with a good story. Mr. Holmes, I have something for you. Mr. Holmes, I see what you're up to. Mysterious stranger pursues betrothed woman. But please, let us keep things professional. I have in my possession an envelope containing details of a special assignment for you. Tell me, are you interested? I believe I am, but to be very clear, Miss Sirtle, my interest extends to the message and not to the messenger. Hmm. So he claims he's not a gal sneaker, seducing women everywhere he goes. Perhaps the truth is even more scandalous? Please spare me the speculation return to the matter at hand. A gang of smugglers, the Eels, have Cordona in their clammy grip. The British Empire can abide it no longer. Mycroft insists they be disbanded, but this organization only falls with the capture of their odious leader, Friedrich Panzer. And note well, I did say capture, not kill. Inside your envelope is a map marked with the eel's warehouses. But alas, we do not know in which Friedrich Panzer resides. Hmm. 
So even Mycroft has his limits. Indeed. You must be sure to identify the correct warehouse before entering. Because once one is compromised, the other's occupants will scatter. Here are all the files, and feel free to use the archive too. Again, do not enter the wrong location, nor see any harm done to Friedrich Panzer. Miss Ertel, if you're quite done with the redundant instructions, I shall get to work. Well, that's perfect. Tortured hero lashes out after rejected romance. Tomorrow's edition will be a sensation. Can you satisfy my curiosity? I clearly have nothing to do with what you are asking of me. Excuse me, young man. Where do you think you're going? It's allowed. I wish to buy a painting from Mr. Boniface Mercurio. Is he at home? Dearie, tell me because old age has made me blind. Did someone write Information Bureau on my forehead? 
because I'm not here to answer your question. Entry is for residents only. If you aren't a resident, please leave, or I shall report you to the police. Don't pass by. Welcome. Let's pick something that suits you. A good choice. A good choice indeed. On the face, sweetie. Is that you? Ah, old age does terrible things to one's sight. I didn't recognize you at first. How are you, Mum? I I'm ashamed to admit that I've lost my key. Do you have a spare? For heaven's sake! How many times will you lose that key of yours? Of course I have a spare. You artists all live in your own little world. Please, accept my thanks. 
I would rather accept your rent. You promised to pay me several weeks ago, and I'm still waiting. I will pay you, I promise, very soon. You'd better do, my dear. Or else I'll just change the lock. And I won't fall for those cow eyes. Judging by post-mortem rigidity, the body lay here for one or two days. The wound is precise. It was inflicted by a razor or a knife. Soaked in blood. It seems as if the puddle of blood was here before the rags. Normal kitchen knife. Could be the murder weapon. I wonder where he got that fancy camera. Despite the overall tendency towards mass, you cannot sit with the drawer pulled out like this. Someone left it after searching. It appears the wine was truly awful. The chest has been searched. Aunt May Whiskey, Brandy Bucks. Quite a collection he had here. The photograph was not pulled out in time. Waste of material. Look at this, John. Isn't it our stolen demon? The photograph was not pulled out in time. Such a waste of material. blood has dried. I've heard of this style of painting. It is called expressionism. Red skin, tails on the back, reminds me of Verda's description of the stolen painting. Thank you. 
Mercurio was developing photographs when the intruder snuck in. Mercurio heard him coming. While the thief was searching the chest, the painter ran towards him with a bottle in his hand. He smashed it across the thief's head. The intruder had no choice but to defend himself, and the weapon of opportunity happened to be a kitchen knife. Mercurio stepped aside to grab the painting, but the wine-blinded thief attacked Mercurio's throat. When the thief came to his senses, he saw Mercurio bleeding on the floor. He grabbed the rags and tried to bandage him, but it was too late. Why did Mercurio attempt to snatch the painting in the middle of a fight? To strike the intruder? Not with his painting, it was too important to him. It's time for some chemical magic, John.
Doesn't look like the painting we need, Sherry. As expected, but that doesn't mean it won't tell us anything. Let's put it on the easel where it belongs. I guess this is his most ordinary painting. Spot the two differences, John? If the intruder didn't take it, the skull should be somewhere here. Monster was actually a man. John, you ought to be thrilled. We are now hunting the devil himself. Uh, what were you saying, Sherry? I was too busy sketching the scene, you know? Crimes and such like. Daily routine. Did you find something? A photograph. 
It depicts a man in a red suit with tails sprouting from his back and multiple people in masks watching the scene. It all adds up, but the act of love, it wasn't given willingly, John. It was a violation, and the girl, she was with child. Give that to me now. Did you recognize someone? No. Although the victim is not from Cordona, she is African. Look at the ritual scars on her face. Get that image out of your brain. You have to continue the investigation. I must speak to the landlady. Perhaps she saw or heard something. Sherry, you cannot tell her the truth about Mercurio. It will hurt her. John, that's illogical. Sooner or later, she will come here and discover a corpse, and I still need to talk to her. Just avoid mentioning corpse. All right, stick to the character. Tell her to call the police. I'll take that into account. And wait here. I've redrawn the people in the photograph. Now you can proceed with your investigation without those horrific details. The chest has been searched. What's wrong, dear? You look like you've seen a ghost. Can you tell me if anyone else has recently entered the flat? Oh, you're talking about that limping man. I'm sorry I let him in. I was scared. And I thought maybe... maybe he would motivate you to find money so that you would pay your rent. No offense, dear. Can you describe him? Oh, so you weren't at home. I was so certain you didn't leave your flat that day. He was of average height, had a limp and a tattoo on his neck, and he was smoking Malpal cigarettes. My husband used to smoke those. They have a horrible smell I can recognize from a mile away. Can I ask a favour? Of course, dearie. Please call the police and ask them to enter the flat, and don't look inside until they come up. What? What trouble have you stepped in this time? It really doesn't matter. Thank you, Mum.
Ne haber? Selam, merhaba. Nasılsın? Bakın bakayım. Nasılsın? May I ask you something? I cannot, sorry. May I ask you something? Ah, mate, I have to disappoint you. I know nothing. Yes, of course. Let me tell you what I know.
Sir, this place is off limits to the public. Please state your business or leave, or I shall request that the police escort you out. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I'm from City Hall. They sent me to oversee the situation. No, you're not. I'm the supervisor of the camp, and I'm the one who's handling the current situation on behalf of City Hall. Ronald Harlow at your service. Now, sir. Tell me who you really are, or you'll have to explain yourself to the police. I have full authority to request they detain you. Very well, Mr. Harlow. I am a private investigator. I'm looking for a witness on my case. Sherlock Holmes is my real name. A private investigator? Really? Even so, you're not authorized. I can't let you in, so please, step back. What about the murder that this crowd keeps shouting about? It's mere assumption. I assure you that the situation is under the police's control. I know you want to deal with this in the right way. You are obviously a professional and a responsible person, but you clearly have never handled a situation like this before. I am handling it, Mr. Holmes. Don't question my capability here. Then tell me how you do it. You can't even calm this gathered crowd, and as for the police, they're not quite managing it either, are they? 
You consider yourself a problem solver, but until today, you've been solving problems sitting at your desk in a dark corner of a city hall room. Here, you need a more practical approach. What are you driving at, Mr. Holmes? I can help you to handle the situation if you're truly interested in solving things quickly and quietly. And how exactly would you manage that? Simply tell the police that I'm with City Hall and am permitted to investigate the scene. I'll work out the rest. But in return, I need your help finding my witness. She's a young refugee. She's with child or was with child recently. Look, there is indeed a dead body inside the camp. So even if the girl you are looking for is there, all the refugees are now being detained and interrogated by the police. They won't allow you to speak with her. And I can't do anything about that until the situation settles down. So it's in our mutual interest to settle it. Oh. I suppose that things are bad enough that I ought not shy away from help. All right, Mr. Holmes. I'll tell the police to allow you to come inside. Just tell me when you're ready. Mr. Harlow, how did the refugees end up here exactly? Oh. So you're not from around here yourself? I've been away for some time. But I read the papers. Yes. This whole story has been in the papers for almost a year now. They were smuggled to Cordona on a ship from Africa. Smuggled? Then why didn't you deport them? The smugglers managed to sneak them to shore and hide them inside an abandoned warehouse. When the police raided the warehouse and found the refugees there, the ship was already gone. We aren't even certain as to which ship it was. We have busy shipping routes with other colonies these days, you see. So you decided to lock them up under a bridge? There was no other option. We're still trying to work out what to do with them. I only hope we'll find a humane solution and not put them on a raft and float them out to sea. Mr. Harlow, what exactly do you do here? What are your responsibilities? What I do and what I am responsible for are two different realities, Mr. Holmes. On paper, I am in charge of the camp territory, security, provision, and the refugees in general. What I actually do most of the time is knock on every city hall door trying to obtain some funding, or at least rations for the camp. The police here on city hall's behalf too? They are. Minus those who came here after the body was found. The governor won't let the refugees disperse into the island, so there's a significant police presence guarding the camp. Naturally, they answer directly to the police. I have some influence here, but I'm not their direct authority. I'm ready to take a look at the scene. All right. Go inside the camp and find Inspector Tewkesbury. He's the officer investigating the scene. Tell him I sent you. Say you're an independent expert from City Hall. He'll fill in the details for you. I'll find my way with words. Thank you, Mr. Harlow. So they keep. These refugees under a bridge like proverbial trolls. No wonder the people outside are so 